this? Well, Monica, this is a full plate of scallops that have to be pan fried and uh, indulged oh. in today. Yeah. <laughs> why scallops? I, actually, I'm always curious. So like all these different fish, like scallop, like why does it look different than all the other? Excuse me. That's such a good question. It's actually a special little muscle. Um, you can see here, I'm just pulling off this yeah, tiny little tendon asking. that you don't, yeah, you don't want to have that. It's really chewy. So I go through I each individual scallop chewy. here. Um, I, well, but this, this you don't want. You want to get rid of that. That little like, what? that's that where it would have joined. Yeah, it usually is. Um, when you buy them fresh, it usually is. Uh, it's not That's always good clean sign. for you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they're like these little tongues. They're little tabs you have to peel away mm. here just to clean them appropriately. Okay. And you can always tell, I'll tell you a little secret here, when you're buying them at the grocery store, yes. uh, the darker pink ones are the, the lady scallops, which are thought to be a little sweeter. Whereas like the wider, more yellow ones are usually the boy scallops. Do I actually taste the difference? Not really, but it is believed <laughs> that there is in fact a slight variation on the theme. Oh. So all I've done here for these, uh, these scallops are funny, you know, the first time I had to make scallops in a professional uh, way was in my first restaurant that I worked at in New York City. Um, and I had not yet learned the value of patience. And I didn't have a whole lot of trust for myself. And I was sort of, I remember very clearly my <laughs> my chef at the time, I was just a, a you know, poultry little line cook. And I had gotten an order for scallops. And I remember trying being so nervous about messing them up that I just kept shaking the pan mm. and they wouldn't brown and they wouldn't brown and I totally overcooked them. And I remember my chef like yelling, like, Eliza, don't touch the pan. Let it do its thing like in front of all of the other line cooks that I was oh, working with, I was so mortified, feeling. not a great feeling, but I did in that moment begin to understand the value of starting to trust my hands and starting mm. to really, you know, take my time mm. <laughs> and patience and that kind of virtue in a weird way. <laughs> That's so powerful. And hey, uh, uh, believe it or not, we have folks here. Welcome to Innovator's Kitchen. You are at our first episode where we pair cooking with leadership lessons. And let's take a bite into today's wisdom. We're talking about uh, scallops, uh, interestingly, as we celebrate International Women's Day. And we thought about it because as Eliza was sharing about the story of, you know, moments that we think about our voice and expressing our true selves. And I loved when you, you shared this story with me and it kind of reminded us of it, because I think for me um, as an individual and especially as a female leader who always looks younger mm. than my actual age, being Asian yeah. American, um, yeah. I think I had always so much fear of what it means to be me. Um, and while I didn't have somebody yelling that I wasn't cooking scallop because uh, that was not my mean <laughs> at the time, um, I've certainly been scolded upon. I'm like, you know, rushing too fast, you know, or not rushing too fast. There's something about like when our, I guess in your younger days, we, when we don't see enough role models that look or think like this, we, we're just trying to figure out based on what we see. And I feel like yeah. I've only seen role model or like people who were in leaders who were very like strong who for females either very strong uh type or very soft type and i felt like i'm kind of neither mm. and then also as somebody who was dwelling between two identities all the time like the american voice and the asian voice and like the korean mm. voice but then the asian american voice like i always felt like i didn't really fit in a box like do you ever feel that way like yeah yeah i think as a, a female in restaurant world especially you know there are crazy statistics out there about a very small percentage, usually about yeah. 2% of, of executive chefs are female. Uh, the role models I had were maybe not necessarily the best and brightest, or perhaps I felt the, the need to fit into mm. a particular mold that I was never going to fit. I was never going to, I'm never going to be a man. So, <laughs> this Surprise. you know, I couldn't, I, I and you know, I valued all of the mentors that I had in my, my restaurant learning, but really being able to find my own way and, and trust, like I say, I keep saying, trust my hands. Mm. These are the two tools I know how to use best. 
developing that kind of trust in myself and finding my own path and my own voice and all of it was really, really valuable. And it took a little bit of a scallop to figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to move you here, Monica, here for just a yes, second. So I can get yes. to up close. How do I know if I'm using too much oil or not? Question. <laughs> oh, good question. So you want to use enough here to coat the bottom of the pan. I'm just using a couple of tablespoons. The size of your pan really affects that. So I'm just using enough so that mm. I can really fry these, but it's not, I'm not, I'm not deep frying scallops mm. today. So just enough to really come up an eighth of an inch and you should hear mm. the good sizzle here this is the best part Ooh, la, la. Whoa. so i dried them really well water's kind of the enemy whenever you're yes. pan frying something or sauteing you want to make sure it's really dry water's gonna affect you negatively if you if you have water bouncing off that oil it's gonna be a little painful you wouldn't be able to get as close as i'm getting here and no i would water a little bit <laughs> it's magical i'm looking at you do it and there's also folks as you can see the phone is next to it i'm like i don't think i would i will be like oh. <laughs> <laughs> moving, it, moving it away um, so for me i'm just spacing these out a little bit giving a little bit of space it's another good mantra give yourself a little space give yourself a little yeah. time be yeah. patient and here's where my chef would have yelled at me he would have said eliza don't touch that pan we are always so keen on like getting to the end of a project oh, or really trying too. to get through something quickly. I want to set it and forget it for a moment. And then I let the food talk to me, right? So I'm going to look for that golden brown crust to start to appear on the really outer edge here of each yeah. of these scallops. If I give it a little wiggle, if they come free, they're ready to flip. If they don't, don't touch it. Mm. This is where that patience starts to come in a little bit. <laughs> Wow, so powerful. Who knew there is a lesson to scallops? I'm going to think about this every time I have scallop, the next time I have scallop. Um, and now you get the fiesta of these songs. Wow. And this is what a little bit of patience can do. Wait, so what happens but if you I, don't have patience? You don't have good scallops. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do that because Eliza was like, no, I'm not going to do that, Monica. I want good scallops. <laughs> I will say this took me quite a few tries. It took the, mm. my chef yelling at me. Like I, it took me a long time, Monica, to really have faith in my abilities. Mm. So I would get nervous and I, you know, I would stand over my pan and like shake it and move it and like get, you know, get agitated and frustrated. And like, all I had to do uh, was let wait. it be, you know, that calm I mean, in the storm. How often do we make that mistake? And I appreciate you reminding that how long that it's not overnight. And I think it's so funny. I think um, looking back and especially as a leader now and, you know, as a, you know, as an entrepreneur, like one thing I think about mm -hmm. is like all the advices that we read online. I mean, there's probably yeah. folks watching this for advice too. Right. And yeah. I think the thing, oh my gosh, I'm like, so I'm already like the impatient part of me is like, I want to like move the <laughs> <laughs> um and the thing that i didn't realize as you were hinting is mm -hmm. both the importance of really understanding the patience lens um mm -hmm. how important it is to not just know but understand and yeah, yeah. what the it why. also means to speak in your voice like i think right like we see so many like wisdoms and quotes or like be yourself like be in your voice but like i think when i was younger i didn't really truly understand that until I like really stepped right. in and like, honestly it was even like it took me COVID to be honest um that yeah, I got comfortable online. expressing more online because I think I've always yeah. hesitated going back to that fear of like what's the type of leader mm. voice that I was seeing like it was very either mm -hmm. like aggressive female voice and I'm like that's not me it was either very soft mm -hmm. it was very like salesy and I'm like oh that's not me so like when yeah. I was in person, because people can see the real me, I got like, okay with it. And even that, like, I had moments, like I cried at conference rooms. It was like, I just wanted to be me, but I felt discouraged to be me. And mm. what COVID realized is that because of all the barriers went down, I realized not only is this kind of the only way I can express, oh my God, you look so yummy. Uh, <laughs> but just being more comfortable, me being me, I was so proud when I launched my online course last fall, like I like, Ah. every sentence the way i wrote would be me speaking the way i genuinely speak which in the past i would be scared because like that's wow. not how i've seen marketers do that's not how i've seen other sure. founders do sure. and i would rush just like how you said oh my gosh that scallop looks so good 
but that's the so, key isn't it you know yeah. I think I think as women the nuance. In, in specific women have a very difficult time finding their identity just because of some of the challenges we're faced with early on in life and especially when we're in what might be considered a man's role yeah it's very difficult often I think to to sort of swim your way through that to get to the other side and figure out exactly what it is you want not what's been put upon you right and I think for me I was fortunate to have some really powerful mentors and amazing lady chefs as well who kind of trained me into into figuring it out myself but it does take time and it does take that patience piece that's so essential it's so crucial and I think allowing space for that is beyond imperative. You can't this. You can't rush it. Don't shake the pan. Like you have to allow time for this. And if you don't, you, I mean, you may never find it. So you really have to. You really have to provide make space for what is your own voice. What is your own kind of outcome you you want, right? So I think that's. I don't know. At the end of the day, that's kind of like. If if I could go back and talk to younger Eliza and help her along, that's what I would share. Just be patient, take your time and get to know yourself because that's kind of at the end of the day, that's what we've got, right? That takes think? time. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that looks so good. And you know, it's crazy now that we got to see behind the scene of actually how it happens. I, I never knew, especially in the way you cook, that how to get that perfect brown the way you did it, it that how important that patient was I think even just me watching I'm like already like doing <laughs> I'm tempted to like I need to cook it bro but like you had to let it sit which is yeah. like crazy I think many of us are now rethinking about this and especially I think as you know emphasizing again as we celebrate international women's month history month uh in March just like as female uh particularly female leaders and individuals, like how do we make sure that just because others are running and others are going after, if that's not true to being who you are, how do you have the courage to just be still and be your own voice? Mm. And that's Mm. when you're going to actually bring the most unique value. Um, And so uh, don't shake the pen. Uh, Don't try to run just because other people are running. Run if you want to run, but stop if you want to stop. And I think, um, I hope that, yeah, while they enjoy the scallop, they think about how they can sit still and uh, and be patient, knowing that it's the voice that makes the difference. And now I'm going to think about next time I buy a scallop, there's a boy and a gr- girl version. <laughs> but now we can't and see we, when it's and, and this month, we honor the girl version. This month, we honor the lady, the lady one. Yes. <laughs> and that voice. <laughs> awesome. With that, we'll be back again with another episode, but we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you.